Welcome to my Montserrat White Wall feature. I'm Jay Markwell, and our guest today is the five-time Calypso monarch of Montserrat, Everton Reality Weeks. Welcome to my Monster Reality. Tell us where you come from. Hey, good day. I'm, I'm from the village of St. John's. Um, I don't know if you know a village they, call, they used to call Collins God. I know things have changed. I, when I go back there, most of the villages, they change the name. But I'm from the village of Collins God in St. John's. Okay. I'm not familiar with that, but go ahead. Hello? Yes, I'm not familiar with that, but go ahead. Yes, it's um, in the north. Um, you familiar with St. John's Villages? Not really. Okay. Well, most people would know where that is because, uh, you know, the, the, most of the people live in that side of the of the island right now, so they would know what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, how did you get into music? Well, in the early days, um, you know, I remember one time I went to school and... Um, you know, they were teaching us, I think it was a science class, and they started teaching us, you know, that you could play a scale by um, filling some bottles with water. Uh-huh. And um, that was the first time I learned of, of, of that there was such a thing as a do re mi scale, you know. And um, we started, we were, we were pretty young then, and... I went home and experimented with it, so I filled a bottle, and then I filled another one, and then I realized, yes, you could change the sound, so I, I don't know what key it was in, but I, 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 I was able to establish a scale, like, you know, the do re mi scale, which is, the, which is actually the major scale in music. Right. At the time, I didn't know that, but that's what it was, and then... At, the, at that same time, coincidentally, there was a song that, that used to play on the, on the radio. And used to play, you know, music was not like it is now. It was a very simple song. I, yeah, I know you would know it. Do a dear, a female dear. Yeah, we used to do that in school too. Right. So, now that song actually went through all the modes in the major scale. If you, if you, because, you know, you start from do, da, 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 dee, 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 which is the Dorian mode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so actually what happened is that by playing that song over and over on the battle, I learned the scale. So that was like a, pre- a preparation, knowing the scales in my head. Right. You know, and then, you know, they used to teach us, um, music lesson, not really music lesson, but to sing. You know, they, um, they had what they call a tuning fork, and the teacher Mary would hit the note that time we were pretty, pretty young, and then they would teach us to sing. And, you know, so we got a little idea of, of what the scale is there. And then, you know, masquerade music at that time was the popular, was the popular, popular music. Right. And... There was nothing in the world that me and my brother loved more than listening to masquerade music, you know. The fife and the, the drum and, you know, so it, it became part of us and, and we always wanted to, to learn more about music. Okay. So just, just for the record, um, for those who might not know, tell us who your brother, who your brother is. Oh, my brother, his name is Clyde, but popularly known as Organizer. And, you know, we were very close. We're just one year apart, so we actually grew up together. We spent most of our time together researching stuff. And as a matter of fact, our first instrument,
instrument that we made was the guitar out of sardine, <laughs> a sardine can, I mean a flat. Yeah, I've, I've heard that before. Right, and we made our guitar. The beef key was the um, was the uh, was the keys of the. Um, we used to use the beef key to tune the guitar, and the the strings or the what like the nylon. You know, they they used to fish in a lot those days. So everybody have nylon lines. So we used to use that. And we used to make our little um, instrument, and you know. Mm -hmm. Mess, up, mess around with it and it developed more and more and you know one day my father saw our interest and he said to us I'm going to get a guitar for you and he brought a guitar and stringed it up tuned it for us you know and that's how we started to, to practice the guitar me and my brother we had a guitar to you know to practice with and we started to practice and practice and practice and practice. We had no way of learning. My father played a, a wonderful style but you know like everything at that time we didn't want to learn that style because he played the finger picking style. Uh -huh. But all the other musicians that we know played like the calypso strumming kind of thing you know which was very popular. So, but nobody would teach you what they know. You, oh, know, you, have, you to, have to try to pick it up. You have to try to pick it up for yourself. And, you know, we started to learn, but um, when me and my brother started to play, we developed two completely different styles. He, because of, of um, you know, the, I already knew how to um, play the scales and all of that, so I was, I always find myself trying to, to pick the guitar, trying to pick a tune, trying to do different stuff. And I remember one day I said to him, you know, you become the bass player and you'll be the guitar player. So he had never played bass before, but I, I sh um, there was a song, um, Wait Till the Midnight Hour. Yeah, that, who's that? That's Wilson Pickett, I think. Uh, yeah, I think so. And we figured out the bass line for that. And we used to play that song. He played the bass and I'm playing the guitar. And, you know, we develop a chemistry that once we're playing, he's the bass player and I am the, um, I am the, the you know, the, either the rhythm or the lead. Okay. And, you know, next thing, we was, I remember when I was about 14 years old. At that time, me and him were pretty good. You know, and um, we started to play in what we call the local string band. I remember the first time that we went to play out. We came back home about, it was about between 8 and 9 o'clock. And our mother locked us out the house, said, you all playing man, going out to <laughs> play music. You're supposed to be back home by 5 o'clock. You're coming home 8 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I remember she locked us out and said, you know, you all are still children. If you all are men, you have to go find your own house. You lost us out. And you know, we had never experienced anything like that. So right. I remember, of course, we started to cry, carried it, you know, outside in the dark. And she never let us in until late. Maybe about three o'clock, she really punished us. Uh -huh. you, you learned your lesson then? Yeah, so, so we had to, um, Anytime we go in to play, we have to come to her and say, okay, we're going to, to practice. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when the, when that year when the Christmas came, now she allowed us to go and play out with the group. So we used to play every day. And I, I, I could remember my first time going to play out and, you know, with the string band. Um, it was, I thought most people remember Thomas Harris and, and me. They used to have a troupe that used to play string band music and dance. Okay. And, and we started to play with them. And I remember my first time going out to play, you know, because they play all day. They, they just go around different places and play? From house to house. House to house? Around the whole country and play. It's all day. See. So, I have never played all day in my life. You go to rehearse in the evening, you play. And then, you know, a few hours and you got home. Right. 
I remember the first day by about four o'clock in the afternoon, my hands were so sore I couldn't touch the string. So I <laughs> I went to Thomas and I said, um, what do you do when your fingers get sore? So he said, show me your hands and I showed him my hands. He said, oh, your hands are good. He said, when they start bleeding, then don't be worried. <laughs> so you know, by the next day, you know, I couldn't even take my hands off because if I took my hands off, I couldn't put it back over there was so sore. Right. But then, by the third day, you start your finger, your hands start to get accustomed, and, you know, and that really prepared me, you know, so my fingers get strong. Right. Really, 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 really strong. So what, for, uh, what, was Calypso something you always wanted to get into? Or? Not really, you know. Um, I, I, um, you know, Monster was a very diverse culture. I don't know if people know that, but in Monster you was exposed to all different type of music. Right. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Huh? I, I know that. Yeah, so really and truly Calypso would have been at that time, Calypso would have been the last on my list. I only played Calypso like, like, you know, if when I'm playing out with the band, you know, we play the, the popular Calypsos, right. like the, the most popular ones. But it's not to say that, you know, you will, you, you would really sit down and sing Calypsos. I mean, maybe a few of the, of the popular songs on the radio, everybody would know them. Mm -hmm. You know, but, you know, that's not something that I had any interest in at that age. You know, I remember, ra you know, radio. Yeah, I remember radio. I know radio, as you say. Radio was the one that always tried to get me involved in Calypso. Even when we were going to school, they had a competition there, and radio told me, oh, you could sing, come in the competition. I remember he helped me to write a song that time. I wasn't interested in this song. Um, talking about the children nowadays, i never forget this song. They do help me to write it, and, you know, I started to sing Calypso. As a, as a matter of fact, around that time, the only Calypso I used to idolize was Fisher. I think Fisher was in my in my eye at that time. Fisher was the greatest Calypso in the world. Right. You know, because, I mean, the way how Fisher was, he was, he, I think, He's a true writer, because Fisher would come and write the songs and sing them for us, and even though we, we were young. And, and some of Fisher's tunes that he wrote those days, I could remember them word for word. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I don't think, I don't think people realize just how, how good of a writer Fisher is. Oh, he's a great writer. Fisher, the thing I liked about the way he, he wrote, his songs always had, had a complete message. It's not, it's not a, well, you know, just by the way, right? Fisher, Fisher songs have a complete, complete, complete message. I mean, the thing I think about him, he was not suited as a commercial writer. He's more of a, of a writer that his, um, his songs could be taught in school or, or could right. live forever, you know. So in, in some respects, uh, a pure Calypsonian. He's a pure writer. Yeah. He was a great, great writer. I mean, I, when, I remember he wrote a song about slavery. And I, can, I can't recall a better written Calypso. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, he, he, was, he was just a great writer. And yeah, we but can. Most of the Calypso that you hear on the radio wouldn't be like that. They would be just commercial. Right. At that time, I used to, I used to think commercial garbage. They wasn't really up to the level. I remember even when Fisher started to compete, I would listen every night to say he must be the best. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, you'll be disappointed at the end of the night. Some stupid song is going to win and I'll be like, why Why they do that? Yeah, it comes, comes, it always comes down to judging. Well, at that time I didn't know what it was. <laughs> yeah, right. I would just be listening and I'd say, well, Fisher is going to win tonight because, of course, I, you know, I believe in him. That's, that's your hero then? Yeah. But he was the first year in the competition. I think it was 1977. And if I tell you how I got it, I didn't, I didn't have any interest in Calypso even then, you know. Um, I remember I used to, you know, write songs because I started to write songs because my brother was organizer. After he started to play in a group, he started to play bass in live wires. And 
I remember they went to Barbados and they recorded an album and I'm like, you know, he was the right. I never used to, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't consider <laughs> organizer was the writer and he started to write songs. So, and he wrote some pretty good ones, but, you know, the thing about him at that time, he wasn't even writing Calypso himself, he was writing love songs. Oh, okay. And <laughs> he used to write about... Um, things related to to, um, to real facts, things that happened to him or experiences. Okay, right. You know, and he wrote some pretty good songs and I remember they did an album and when the album came out, I was disappointed because, you know, I was looking for the album to... The songs were great. I think Blasphemy Grace did a fantastic job with the, with the singing, but for some reason, I don't think the overall um, the production, mm-hmm. you know, was what I was looking for. I was looking for it to, you know, to make a big impact, which it, which it did not. Okay, who's who's Glasswood Grave? Is that is that Kuro or Kitaka? Kitaka, Kitaka yes. yes, right. Yo, I don't, you must remember that album, man. When they came out with that nice album, it was a, the songs were great. But is I that, don't is, think is that, that the one that has um, Madrid, Madrid on it, and um, I think that was on it two years. Uh, and there's a um, woman you're hurting me. Right, that 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 is the album. Sad world. Yeah, I I have that. Yeah, but uh, you know, I just think that it, it, even though I didn't know anything about music, because I I said to myself, I don't I think that if the um wherever they went to record the production, the production. I'm not talking about the songs, about the album, about the way they played or anything like that. I just thought the production was not. There was something lacking in it. That's what I thought at the time. Okay. You know, I didn't think it was anything wrong with the, the songs, the musical ability, or the, the, the performances. You know, because, you know, when you listen to other records at that time, mm-hmm. you know, I couldn't tell you what was wrong, but I knew something was wrong. Okay. So how did you do in 77? So, anyway, to, to, to continue, in, in 77, I... Remember, I wrote a few songs early in the year. Because um, by that time, my guitar playing was improving, you know. So I sat down and I was writing some songs. And then, you know, I think I was inspired like by radio competing and organizer competing on them. I said, maybe I should just, I mean, maybe I should just get involved. As a matter of fact, I remember what got me in so interested was um Shacha did a song it was not like the typical calypso then it was remember if you remember lucinda yeah and i was listening to the carnival because you know in st john's you could hear it because you could pick up um all the radio stations in antigua so i i listened to the to the to the carnival and i listened to Shacha with that song and that got me you know generated some interest so i started to write and then I, I wrote a few songs and everybody started to tell me, boy, I like your songs, you should enter the competition. Mm-hmm. But I really, you know, I didn't know anything about, about how you ready or anything like that. And my brother, organizer said, you should enter, you have very good songs, you will do good. So I said, okay. I remember I went to the, um, to the, to the van, no, 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 before that, I, one day I was home and I heard my name on the radio. <laughs> and it was my brother organizer who registered me because I, even though I, I told him, yes, I was not going to go to register anything like that. And I heard my son, my name on the radio to go to the band house for rehearsal. So he came and he said, you see, you have to go because your name is on the radio. <laughs> right. So I, anyway, I went, I went to the rehearsal. I was doing my song, Woman Come to Jam. Well, this time I'm not going to call the name of the musician that I went, that was at the band house that night. I went and I started to sing the song with them and, you know, it, things didn't go too well because they, they were not playing the song. Because since I played a little guitar, I knew how I wanted the song to sound. Right. And they were not playing the song that way, so whatever went wrong with them. They actually chased me out to the band house. Say, you all you want to be Calypso, you know, you can't sing. <laughs> and you know, I was very polite with them. I said, thank you, sir. I mean, and goodbye. So I went home, and my brother said, how did it go? I said, it didn't go well at all. The man and them say that me no good. They send you home. 
<laughs> so he said, um, he said, you talk in stupidness. He said, how could I tell you that with that with this song? Let me tell you that's exactly what happened. And he said, no, man. And he said, okay, let me tape this song for you. The way you play it, I'm going to record you on a tape and then give it to them. Because they, they, they probably didn't, you know. Anyway, something happened and the, the, the committee fired that band. I do not know what happened. I cannot tell you for what reason. Okay. But then they hired the TND. So my brother said, well, he, every day I said, I'm not going back to the band house. I'm not going back because I'm not, I, I don't want to go back. But he wouldn't give me, he wouldn't, he wouldn't let me give up. And every day he said, boy, you should go anyway. I decided, okay, I'm going to go one more time because this just to please him. And I don't know if you heard of a guy named Carl, Carl Bass? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with the name. Yeah. Right. When I went, it was Carl, the, the, um, Greg was the, the, the man in charge and Greg told me, go to Carl. And I went to Carl and Carl started to play this song. And when he started to play this song, I was amazed. He got it right? Huh? He had it right? He was playing even better than how I played. Nice. He was playing it so sweet, so, you know, that's when I started to feel, you know, I started to feel good. It's like, you know, the way he played, I mean, I'm singing and he was, he, he didn't miss a thing, that guy, you know. And after he played the song so good, you know, I didn't even realize it was a good song still because, you know, you, I just felt good the way how, we, how everything went across. Right. And I remember they were playing out that weekend, they were playing at, um, they call it Harbour Court. You know, it's a just down below ice cream parlor was. Yeah, right, right, you're right, that's where it was. Right. At the Harbour Court, they were playing yeah. right there. And um, I, I, I happened to, to be coming uptown, and when I come, <laughs> the, the people and them said to me, grab the mic. And I'm like, okay, first opportunity to sing. And they started to play this song, and he had Fisher, Black Mims, and, you know, that's of the other Calypso and I'm telling you, when this song started to play, I was amazed at the reaction of the people. And, you know, that's how I, I got involved with Calypso. Because after, you know, the reaction and everybody, oh, you got to sing, you got to right, sing. Right, right. And I almost still didn't sing that Christmas. I almost didn't sing. Because, because this song was so popular, every way people see me and everywhere, the other band, they called me up to sing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that um, it takes so much out of you. Right. So every time they called me to sing, I would sing. I didn't know anything about the business. And I, I just would go on, on the truck or wherever it is, we said, and sing. Mm -hmm. And by the time, you know, it came, because I made it to the finals, mm -hmm. I almost didn't even sing in the elimination. Because I was so hoarse. When they had the elimination, I was so hoarse. And by the night of the finals, I, I said, I'm not going to go. That's it. I can't go anymore. And I, you know, I remember I had some family came down from Antigua and they come. You're not going to sing and then you will come to here? Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God. I was home. I was so sick the night before. I was, even before the show started, I was home in bed, you know. And then I decided, you know, I'm just going to go to please everybody. And I just, I went and did it, you know. Right. So how did you do in the finals? Well, I didn't play in the finals, you know. I, I know I didn't play. That was, the, that was my first year. I made it to the finals, but that was it. Okay. I, like I said, when I started to sing, it, it was not, a, I did not start to sing. I didn't, just to be able to sing at that time was enough for me. Right. I, I didn't, even because I couldn't see myself placing before Fisher or Black Twins or somebody like that. At that time, those were the, those were the people who I look up to. Even radio was, was somebody who, who I looked up to as a Calypsonian. Right. All the time, so I did not start to sing, believing, well, I'm going to be the best or I'm going to win or anything like that. Okay, so you, had, you, got, you got your first year on your belt. I was 77, 78 comes around. You're getting, re you're getting ready to compete again. Well, when 78 com came around, I remember me and radio, as, as usual, you know, uh, me and him used to go to Salem, because that year now, um, the TND, I don't think they were involved with, with the Calypso anymore. So it was, um, 
I went to sling, what's the name of the band that time? Was it Sledge or Libra one? I don't remember what was the name at that time. Oh, one of those sailing bands? It's the same band, but you know, they, they, they um, what was their first name? I don't think there was Sledge yet. Or maybe there was Sledge by that time, I don't know. They, when they started, they were Libra one or Sledge. One or three of them. I remember, and you had the, the same guy used to play on... Um, Right, it was Desmond, Desmond Daly, he was in charge of the band. I right. think it was, it was Sledge at that time. But I'm not 100% certain. It could have been Libra one. But I sang with that band. Mm -hmm. And me and Ray, they used to go practice every night. We used to leave St. John's. And sometimes we get in home 3 o'clock in the morning, no, no ride home. And sometimes 9 o'clock, me and him used to be shut out the band house. Because... That year, Cutter was the king, and the king is rehearsing. And I remember me and Radio sitting in the road, and we say, it's going to be different this year. We're not going to go to that competition just to sing. Right. It's, and, and we made a vow there that Cutter will never beat us again. We, I mean, we didn't know, <laughs> you know, but we, we just said, we're not going to let Cutter beat us, and he was the king. So what, what two songs you had that year? What two songs you worked on for, that, for the competition that year? That year, I did... Um, Paved the way. I mean, that was one of my. One of, that song was, became very, very popular. If you search for it on the map, it's smaller than a dot. Never mind the size, it is my little paradise. Or monster at Ali Ghana. Place of my birth, I will love you forever. You don't remember that song? Yeah, I'm familiar with that. Remember that. that. I did that song and another tune called Jump Up Baby. That, that I remember too. And that was the first time. And you know, even. Like, you know, even that night with that competition, I did not even know that I, I um, could place in the competition. I didn't have dreams of winning the competition. All I ever wanted to do was do good. I remember Dave Eskom doing a review of the um, of the, uh, the Calypsonians that were in the finals. And I think it was 12 of us, or 10 of us, or 12. I think it was 10 or 12. And in the review, I was last. Really? Yeah, in the review, I was dead last. And it, it wasn't, well... He said it was not because of the songs, because I had good songs. Mm -hmm. But he said something which was quite true. But it was not really true, but it appeared to be true, because everybody thought I was a terrible performer. Oh, okay. You know, and in fact, I was not. Even in school, I had that problem, because I used to do drama. Right. I would, I would be great on the night of the performance, but I never liked acting. When I said acting, I never like going through the motion because I I was shy. I had to get my I had to get going in order to do it, you know. So some nights I would come on the stage and sing, and I would not, you know. I was too shy to to bring it out. Right. But you see, when you put somebody on a big stage, there's a disconnect. So the shyness would go away. The people are not close to you. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I get you. You, you know. If you put me on a stage, I'm fine. But if I go in a band house in a close proximity and everybody's yeah. up to you, then... That, that's a different story. It's a different story. You, you, the shyness remains. Right. You know. So what happened is that I remember that night, because of what they wrote in the paper, I become completely disinterested with the competition. Mm-hmm. You know, and my brother, organizer, was very much hyped for the competition. And, but at that time, we we had a group, the Royal Monstrous Choir, who I was writing for, who I was more interested in, because we were doing... We had we had won the, um, the gospel competition on, on um, Radio Paradise. Uh -huh. And we used to perform... Yes, so I remember, anyway, that night we were supposed to perform in St. John's Church, the very same night of the, of the final. And I remember we were in church performing. I, I had an, uh, the, the, uh, the uniform of the, of the choir was white top and gray bottom. Uh -huh. And I remember we were performing in church and I I would run outside. Oh, we have to hurry up. It's getting late, you know. And so... He's, he's, he's I, I would tell, tell him, relax, no matter if we're going to get there, if we go, if we, I say, if we miss it, don't know where, but <laughs> I would make a joke, I say, what happened, if we miss it, if we miss it, we are right. And he said, no, we got to go. And um, I remember, as soon as we came to the gate, 
and God, he have all his props and, you know, uh -huh. you know, they used to use presentation and all of that. Right, right. And access. And the next California is organizer. And I, and I, I went up to him and I touched him and I said, um, organizer is not ready. Um, could you switch places with, it, with, with, um, let me switch with him and just announce me. And he said, okay. And he said, sorry, and he announced reality. And that, that's it? Yeah, I didn't change into anything. I just went on the stage and sing. And but which song you did first? I did Pave the Way. And it's the best performance I ever did in my life because I wasn't even psyched up. I didn't have time to, to plan anything. I just right. went on the stage and, and did my song. So that just you just you and your mic, no props, nothing? Not me and the mic, no props, nothing. I didn't take a thing on the stage when I won the crown. The, sec the, 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 the second song, Jump Up Baby, I had uh, some girls dancing with me because okay. I had, you know, you, I would have time for that. But that first song, I didn't, it was just me and the mic. So at which, at which point during the night did you, did you get the sense that maybe you, maybe you might win tonight? Or did you ever get that feeling at all? No. Um, it, it, for me, at that time, it was not about that. Okay. What I, want, what I wanted to do at that time was to was to put on a good show. Like I, like I told you, from the review, it's like, okay, he's going to come. I mean, you know, they have me at, at the bottom. So yeah. I wasn't even thinking, well, you're going to win. I remember the first time I had any idea that I that I won the competition was when um, after I, we were standing there, somebody who was close to the come and tell me that, before they announced it, came and told me that you won the competition. And I'm like... Huh? But, you know, it didn't sink in. As a matter of fact, it didn't sink in until the next. When it, when it sank in that I won the competition was I, one year after, when I had to go back on the stage to defend it. That, would be, that was 79? That was, yes. That's when it sank in, because when you're going on the stage, when you're going up now, everybody, that night of the competition is like everybody, oh, you know, you start to hear the talk and, and, and this thing, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Right. <laughs> then, I, then I realized, well, I had something that I could lose, but I, right. you know, before that, so in the whole year, I didn't even think, and I'm telling you, I'm going to be honest with you, mm. like, you know, you see people saying, oh, and, 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 and congratulating you, but it doesn't seem, I don't know how to explain it to you, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make you any different, you know, right. and, and things that people think would make you different, if it don't make you any different, it doesn't think in that you have really done anything. No, it was, like you said, it, was, it wasn't until, until you get ready to defend it that you realize you have something. I'm ready to defend it and realize, well, hey, here's something that I could lose. Right. Which brings us to, which brings us to 79, which, um, that's a year I feel is probably one of our finest Calypso years, 1979, arguably. Yeah. Um, that's the I think, year. Yeah, I think it was, it, yeah, that's the year that, um, that I think the competition was, you know, that, like I said, like you feel you have something to lose. Cause right. It was, it was tough. It was, that's the year, you had radio with Swordman that year. Yeah. And um, the, I remember the theme for that year was Save Energy, right? Yes. And that's, you, you had a song called Save Energy, as did Falcon. Did you know Falcon have, have, have had a song with the same title? Well, yes. Um, what happened, and I don't know if people realize it, is not that, is, is that um, what happened is that me and Falcon accepted the challenge. It was not, it wasn't, I'm trying to explain it the right way. All the Calypsonians, not only Calypsonians, but the whole country was asked to, to um, what do you put it? There was an open competition. Mm -hmm. It was in the paper that you could write a song about the energy crisis. And the best song would win the competition. What happened is that the, I think that they organized with the festival committee that if anybody did that song, they would be able to sing it in the competition also. Okay. Um, the both competitions, even the both competitions, were separate because um, it was something that you know they were promoting. I don't know if you understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, I, get, I understand. I mean, but they were promoting it, so they wanted as much mileage out of that. Out of the out of the, the, the energy thing. Out of the energy thing as possible, and um, the only two people who accepted to, to do it was me and Falcon. We, we didn't do it because we were, just simply because we were competing with each other. It was a, it was a requirement. Right. You know, in order to win it, you have to be in it. Right, right. Falcon, Falcon is your friend? Well, at that time, I would say yes. Okay. 
but the, the thing about it is that he accepted the challenge because it, it was there, not not competing with me. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Competing to win that that prize because they were paying from mm. whoever won the energy song. Right. So you on. So you had you had you had your save energy tune and your second tune was um rolling boom boom, rolling boom, boom the classic rolling boom boom. Do you remember what Falcon's second tune was? We have your bam bam, a oh. great song too. We, we had the same team all around, you oh. know. And I guess it on radio had Soul Man that year. Yes, yes. That's a tough year. So how, how did you feel going into that? Did you, were you confident you could, you could defend? Actually, um, I'm glad you asked me that question, right? Because the truth of the matter is that Falcon had great songs, you know. Mm -hmm. Notably great songs. Um... I think his songs were probably a little more commercially viable than mine. Um, I don't know how to ex explain that to you. But yeah, the, free, free bam bam, free free bam bam especially. Was. No, both of his songs were commercially, the, I mean, okay, I'm trying to explain, the way he writes, uh -huh. the way he writes is more of um, crowd-pleasing songs. Right. That's just his style. and. Um, but like I said, when I when I when I the first time I, I got involved in writing was listening to Fisher write and Fisher was not a writer in that vein. Fisher was a storyteller. Right. So when I did my save energy I I was not trying to be commercial to be a, to make it a commercial song in any way. Okay. I I was trying to, to win the competition. And that's what I did. You understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Um, Falcon song was more of a sing along but save energy, you know. His might his tune might have been more catchy but I was trying to you know, to tell a, a, a paint a different picture. Right. Yeah, your, your song your song was slower. Right. Mm. Right. It was more of a message song. Message, yeah. Which is which which enabled me to win that competition. You know, it's, and that's interesting you say that because even today a lot of people who might not remember, will not remember some of the words, any of the words to your song, but you remember those two lines from Falcon, save energy, save energy. Right, right, that's what I'm saying. And that, that, that is what made his song so popular. It, it, um, you know, it was more of a commercial style song, mm -hmm. you know. But my song was more of the, um, the body of the song itself. It's like when you listen to the to the to the complete song, you get you get the whole message, you know. Right. Because my song was not designed like like his, and that's the difference with 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 a writer like me or a writer like Hero. I I would not write a song simply because I want it to be commercial. If it becomes commercial, okay. But it was never the intention to sit and write a song. A song must come to me, I, I, not me go to the song. You know, I don't know where it is coming from. Right. Okay. When I get an idea for a song, that's the song I go with. We got it. So now you, here you are sitting on, um, you got two wins in a row, 1980 rolls around, and you have to defend again. Third time, for the, looking for the third crown. What's, what's, the, um, what's the feeling like going into 1980? Well, the, the, thing about, the thing about 1980 is that by that time, you know, um, sometimes you could get sidetracked from who you are. If you if you try it, because by that time everybody all oh, reality 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 reality. Yeah, you're, you're, you're super sad then. Yeah, everybody saying you're good and you're this and you're that and it make you want to be good. Mm -hmm. You know, but like 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 I said, there was one thing about me that I had to wait for the songs to come. I I was never somebody who could just I could do it, but I never just. Say I'm gonna write a song and this is what it's gonna be. I'll be on my guitar or I'll be sitting down and this song will come to me. Okay, so you're going, we're going along here, competition is coming up. Competition is coming up and I didn't have any song. So we're looking November? I'm looking, um, even in December, I, um, I think I had one of the songs. I had one of the songs by early December. But okay, I okay. You, did, you, did, you had Masquerade, you had Masquerade and... Um, I wrote Masquerade a long time ago. Okay. You know, you th and, and that is the year I did um, struggle, right? Right, so uh, which point did you get struggle? What I'm saying is I had, I, I wrote Masquerade a long, pretty early in the year. It came to me maybe around August. Uh -huh. So I had that song, you know, but I remember when I went, I, I played this song because of Black Prince, and he told me that song is a classic, it was Masquerade. Mm -hmm. 
but I didn't have another song. Because no other song came to me. I guess I was so in love with Masquerade, there was no other song would come. Because right. I would be, every time I sit down, instead of trying to get another song, I'll be, I'll be playing Masquerade. And so you get, you're getting worried, or what? No, I'm like, I'm going <laughs> to come, I'm going to be, I'm going to do something. And, you know, plus I always had one or two old songs I could go back to, which I had there, so I'll be like, if it comes to that, I'll just sing something. So when, when did you get struggle? It was about, it was about a, a week before the competition, before the finals, or two weeks. One night I was sleeping, and somebody said something to me the night before. It was completely negative, and, uh, you know, and I went home, and it was bothering me what the person said. Mm -hmm. And I went to sleep, troubled, like, you know, why would somebody say something like that, you know? And then I wake up the morning and I said to him, and, I, and as soon as I got up, I said, when you face reality, life is one big struggle. You know? Mm -hmm. He said, aha, uh -huh, I got it. That's it right there. You That's it right there. What was, it, what, what's, what's the first verse of that song? You remember that? Yeah, well, inflation, oppression, starvation, killing the poor man is a bitter price we have to pay. Why we struggling from day to day, we work till we back breaking, yet the poor man suffering, you know, when we face reality. You know, that, yeah, that's it. Right. So, but, by, by the time, um, by the time the competition rolls around now, you got, you got your two songs. You're confident, you're confident this year that you can do it? Because, I mean, three in a row is a... What I did, as soon story. as I got this song, I went and, that's not how I work, you know. I mean, as soon as I get this song, I go, bam, bam, I run to the band house, boom, I... I get hammer and I say, let's go. We're going to put this song on the radio by tonight. Mm -hmm. If I get a song, I write it, bam, I go to the band house, I sing it, I put it on the radio and it's good to go. So I went to the, to the band house and we went over the song. I got Willsy to come and record it, bam, it's on the radio. That's how we used to do it. I never used to waste time. Once I got the song, I, 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 I know. If I, if I got the song, I knew it was the song. Well, Willsy, Willsy... Rosie was doing a tremendous job in those days. Oh, yes. Yeah. Rosie was one of, let me tell you, you can't find people like that in this world again. And I'm not, I'm telling you, you just have to tell Wilsey you're ready to go on. Wilsey's going to take time, come record all these songs and get them on the radio. Get them on the radio. Wilsey, that festival would be dead years ago. Because um, there was no other medium to generate the interest. No, nothing. There's, it's only ZJB. And if, if ZJB does if, if nobody at ZJB makes an effort to get it out, not Naham. Right, and you and you couldn't you couldn't get the songs recorded unless it's the night of the, uh, uh, right, the show. Right, show. The Willsy still, but he didn't wait for that. You could tell Willsy you got you want to put out your song, and Willsy would come and record your song. Show up to the band house, where where we be? The band house and spend countless hours, you know, just to put your song on the radio. He was a tremendous guy. So were you were you um were you satisfied with with with, with your performance the night uh, the night you did struggle and masquerade? You thought you had it. Well, as a matter of fact, <laughs> that is one night I could say I was overconfident. Um, you know, um, let me put it, that, that um, competition, I don't think there was any competition. That's the only competition I, I had entered knowing definitely that I'm going to win. Okay. And this, now let's talk about, you know, we got, you're going into the 80s now, and Hero comes along and you got, you know, you're competing with Hero. Um, how do you, how do you look back on, at some of those some of those days? Well, the, the thing about Hero, what I really respected about Hero is that Hero was a great singer, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, the, the the Calypso Arena never had that before, except maybe Falcon. You know, um, we didn't have somebody, you know, a singer of that. I mean. I'm talking about vocal vocalists. Right. I had a vocalist of that standard to, to, to compete against, you know. So the competition now is it is much harder because Hero himself, because of his of his great vocal talent, could take a lesser song and beat you easily. Right. Because his voice itself is uh, 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 Hero used to sing with me and my brother and Hero would be the vocalist, not me and him. <laughs> if you want to say it. So, we knew of his great vocal talent, and, and, and you know, and, and in itself is what made Hero so great, his vocal talent.
on him, and in my in my view, I mean, well, he's admitted it. He was hard to deal with in in, in that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. But you see, as as the Lord would have it, you know, there's always an equalizer. Even the hero had that great vocal talent. Me and my brother organizer, by that time, we were um, we were um, our own uh, what do you call it. Um, I'm trying to find the proper word. We we were great. We had great chemistry in performing. Okay. We knew how to combine everything. You know the the music. How to move to the music. Right. So the, how to deliver the word at the right time. How to you know capture the audience. How to how to take them in. You know, and right, these so are things. I guess um, if you have a great vocal talent, then you you overlook these things. Right. The better time you 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 basically your polish perform. Well, yes, yes. We were, we were. You know, you had the right you had the right thing together. You knew, you knew how to you present, know how present to the material. And I think that is the only that is the only way that we could beat that we could that you could beat hero. Was, right. Was by performing. Or, or, or you know, try to gain points in other areas because. He, no, I don't think that Hero, Hero was a great melodian, mm-hmm. but his voice was so sweet that he would outscore you in melody. Right, right. You know. So, was this, so you, was, was, was company against him something that you, that you, um, that would get you psyched up? Well, let me put it this way. Um, once I'm performing my song, I, I don't get psyched up for, for somebody, I get psyched up to deliver my song. Okay. If, if my song is going to be... You know the weapon that I have, and not not what the person does, because I could only get the fullness out of what I have, and I am going to get the full out of what I have, regardless of what. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, to this day, and that's one of the one of the reasons why I I am um, I don't believe in competition anymore. I think that sometimes a good performance could be lost, and people don't know. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. For example. Now, I remember. The year that I did one of my best songs, and I'm, I could say this, because if I could go back and you could look at the song, and people turned to me and said that the song was not good at all. Yeah, which song is that? Yeah, I did um, Lucky Land. Lucky Land? Yes. I did a song called Lucky Land, and it was my, it was, it, it was deemed as one of my worst years in, 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 in the um, Calypso arena. And that's that's the song you thought was uh, that's the song you thought was a was, was a good song, a very good song. No, it was a very good song, mm-hmm. and I know it was a very good song. But what happened that year? I'm not gonna. I, I'm not somebody gonna look back and, and cry about it. What happened that year is that um, the song never came over, you know. And um, I look back at the competition and I said to people, I didn't. I, I'm, I'm a person who do not who never cry foul and say look. Right. And I'm saying, if you have 12 Calypsonians singing in a competition, right? And you could play all the other, you could play all the other artists' songs from the night and you can't play mine. I say, why? And I, I, tried, and I say, the reason why they can't play it because you were never coming through. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, then. But it, it was never there. Right. So I was on the stage singing and that was it. It's like they didn't bring what I was, because what happened is that the band that I was using was a different band to what everybody is using. Oh, okay. So, even though the man is on the stage, the man was never hooked into the peer system. But it was hooked in, but they never brought it over the night. And that's why Radio Monshot was never able, because that time Radio Monshot itself would record what goes on. That's why Radio Monshot couldn't, couldn't pick it up, you know. And if Radio Monshot couldn't pick it up, then it was not coming through. Yeah, I will like you, I mean, I mean, I remember the song they thought. Yeah, because that's what happened. It, because it never played on it, it never, it never played. They didn't have it. Okay. It, it never came through, and um, I knew who did it, and I never complained about it. I said, well, you know, just take your loss and move on, because by that time, by that time, I had learned that music is more than any one person. The art farm, it was not about me. Mm-hmm. Once the art farm is growing, we would all either benefit or suffer from it. It, 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 you can it cannot be about one person, and I think that is the thing. One of the mistakes that monsters make is that they would think that it would be about one person or about some people. No, if if, if the country is prospering, it benefits everybody. Exactly. If music is prospering, it's going to benefit everybody that's in the music. 
And that's one of the reasons I would never, ever, you know, try to bring down somebody who is doing well. I would always support another artist who is doing well. Because if that artist does well, it helps me to do well. Right. Now, I want, I'm, one, of, one, of, one of my favorite songs of yours is, is uh, Setting Sun. I'm not sure if that's the title. The Sun is Setting. The Sun is Setting. Love that tune. Um, well, that's the first time I lost anyway, but I do love it still. Which, um, which year was that? I think it was 81. And, and to be honest, that was my best year. I miss the best year uh, in terms of the, 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 the people mm -hmm. accepting me. That, by that time, that year, when I sang in 81, I did Mommy Here Rhythm and the Sun is Setting. Right. And I couldn't ask for anything greater from the people themselves. But the Sun is, this, the, that is, um, that's almost a prophetic tune. When you listen to that tune, Today it's almost it's as it's as relevant today as it was um, back then, or even more so today. When you look around, at, you know, look at what's happening around the world. That song could have been written like yesterday. Well, I'm glad you said that because I was never a believer in public sentiment. I would never write a song, and that's one of the things that I used to criticize some of the other artists for. It's like. I believe that anything that you say or anything that you write should be an everlasting tribute. I do not believe that, let's say, I, I, I don't really want to pick on anything, but I'm just going to give an example. Okay. Like, let's say in, in the time of um, Hurricane Hugo, I know Hugo had a very popular song, um, Where the Galvanized Gun. Mm -hmm. Great tune, but... Me personally, I would never write a song like that because it relates to just one issue. You, you understand what I'm saying? Right, right. If I'm going to write a song, I'm going to write a song about an issue because the issues of man are everlasting. They're not just like something happened now, you know. And even I could see the sun was setting a long time ago and a lot of things, you know. It may not have turned out the same way that, that, I, that I was seeing it, but right. I could see the sun was setting on lots of things. Yeah, we, we've been heading in a certain direction for quite, for quite some time. Quite a while, that's what I'm saying, and, and man himself has been heading there, and, and, you know, and if you understand what the song means, it's like, these things is always ahead of you to tell you what is coming, you know, and I guess I looked at life from a different point of view. Yeah, that's a that was, that's a great 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 song. Now let's talk about um something else. You uh, you at some point you started to work with with, uh, with Arrow. Tell us a little bit about how you you started working with with the mighty Arrow. Well, actually, um, when I started to um to write the songs for the um for the for the choir, remember I told you. Really? Yeah, you were back in that. Yes, um, for some reason. It got around that I was a writer. I don't know who who did it, but you know that's what started that for because I used to write the songs for the group and arrange it, and you know mm -hmm. it, we used to enter the three C's competition, and we did very 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 well. You know we were very very popular. You know I don't know if you remember Paget Edwards. Paget Paget Charles? Yes. Yeah, I remember Paget. He was the lead singer for the first song that we did, and um. Then you had um, a guy named Felix. He was a policeman in Montreal. He did the lead on the second song. But it was always was a car. Car. So, but you know, different people take the lead on this. Okay, so Paget was, Paget, Paget was a police officer too, wasn't he? Yes, yes. yes. And, and we had that choir going. So I don't know, somebody must have told Arrow that I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. you know. Plus, I entered the competition, and I remember the, the morning after the competition, he came up to me, and I was so surprised. Arrow came up to me and said, and I love your first song. And when he left, I was like, huh? my first song? Because I myself like my second song. Okay, so l just clear that up first. The first song was which, which, which one? The first song was a song called um, The Message. Okay. And the second song was, at that time I called it Female Jam Session, Woman Come to Jam. Woman Come to Jam, right. So he tell me he liked my first song, and I'm like, First time, okay. All right. So, but I felt proud that somebody like that would even compliment me. Right, right. But I didn't leave. Then sometime later in the year, 
I was living in Kingsdale at the time, and he came and said that he wanted me to um, play some guitar for him. I'm like, okay. But, you know, after a while, like, I, I decided to go and see what he was all about. And then that's how I, I went. I started to, to work with him when I went. It was Lasso and Arrow, and I started to work with them. So just you, you and you and him and, and Lasso? Yes, basically. You know, you know, I don't remember. You know, I can't. I never could remember what Lasso's. Um, well, at that time, Lasso, I think Lasso was his, was his chief writer at that time before uh-huh. I came on board. I know Lasso worked at Great uh, up, Upper Groves, but we can't remember his first name for for some reason. <laughs> but you know, you know, I never know his first name. I mean, he spent so much time. Unbelievable! Everybody just called him Lasso. As Lasso, that's what I know him as. Okay, I gotta find. I gotta find out what his name is. I used to be at his house every day. We used to come to his house, and me and him would sit down and write songs, and you know. Okay. And sometimes we would go by our house. You know, he was living with his mother there. Right. So these are the very, these are the very very early Arrow years. Very 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 early. You and you and him and Lasso working working together. Yes. Okay. So what's the first album you you guys um put out? Um, I could remember some of the songs from the album, but to tell you the name of the album. I'm okay, but just give us a couple of the tunes because. That uh, same album he had um he had Man Must Live and um, Woman Come to Jam mm-hmm. and those songs on it. Uh, what the Sweet Beat album might uh, it could have it, it, it's either the Sweet Beat album or the or the one before Sweet Beat. Okay. No, we can always look that up. It's been a long time. If you check it it's, it's a long time. Yeah, true. It's a long time ago. So you you spent you spent you, you did you um did you start a tour with him after you started touring? Well, not really, you know. Um me and Lata used to write for him. How how I end up getting involved in, in the touring and all of that is it's like um well, I remember Arrow, we did some songs and Arrow was supposed to go to Trinidad and to record as, as usual. And mm-hmm. I remember one year he was getting ready to go and, you know, he was supposed to leave the morning and I was home and my phone rang and it was Arrow. And Arrow said, um, you have, to, and it, by that time he was supposed to leave like one or two o'clock and he called me around 10 o'clock in the morning and I said, let me have to come with him to Trinidad. And he said, why? And he said, um, Ed Watson just call him and tell him he can't come down there without the man who played the guitar and them, and them stuff there. Right, so um, Ed, Ed probably had heard... Um, we, we tape the songs and send them to him. Oh, so, so what Ed got was the demo, basically? That the demo, so Ed <laughs> said, well, you, you know, make no sense, you come without that guy who playing the guitar and those. Right, right. <laughs> you know, guy, he say he have the right feel for the songs, you know. You could tell he feel in the songs, so you might as well you bring him to. Right. So that's how I started to go to Trinidad with him. And then, while we were in Trinidad, Arrow did a show in Trinidad, and I went to the show. It was me and Falcon, and we sat here. And when he came off the stage, you know, Falcon said, you know, I didn't like how the show go. I didn't like it at all, you know. And I said, I said to Aaron, you, you are too good to do this. If you're going to do a show, you have to have your own group. Because there's no way you're going to get what you want from just a band who have no interest in you. Okay. You can't, you can't go and stay like this anymore. Put your own group together. So basically, if you want to take it to another level. Yeah. You if you want to have your songs... You know, because in, in my view, when I run watch him there, to me, it, it was ridiculous. I'm like, Arrow, you can't do this. Don't make no sense. You're too, you're too big for that now. You have to have your own, your own group when you go to sing, so you get, you, you know, you're getting exactly what you want. Right. And that's when we started to put the group together and, and do performances. What was it called? But it wasn't really. We didn't, it, we didn't call it anything at all. Oh, okay. We just wanted. It was Arrow. We just want Arrow, to okay. put your group together that when Arrow is it's still Arrow. Right, right. When Arrow is coming, you have your own musician playing behind you. Too. Okay. So who, who, else was it, who else was there with you? You had you and um, Arrow and who else did you get them busy? Well, what we did, we, we, we just we put the band together. Mm-hmm. And the, um, Musicians from Trinidad? No, from Trinidad, no. Oh, okay. No, no, no. We, we, um, we got some hand players from Antigua. Uh-huh. And then we, we got the, the basically, at, in the beginning, what we started to do first, because 
you know, at that time, I used to do a lot of shows. So, in the beginning, we didn't take a whole group together. Me and my brother, I used to take him, he would play bass and I would play guitar. And we would go with him and, well, not go with him, he would send me before. I would go there for days and practice the band, uh -huh. make sure that everything is right, the hands are right, everything is right, and then me and my brother would be on stage playing, so you would have a new player. Right, right. You know, then we started to build it and get it more and more, then we started to include more and more music. Oh, okay. Everything themselves. Alright, so when, when did um when did it become the University of Soka? Were you a part of that? Um, that is something that I heard about when after I after I, I stopped working. Oh, okay. Um, I still think that's a bogus name. There's no <laughs> um, in my view, that's just a ridiculous name. Right. Because um, if you have if you have to have a university of soca, and I'm going to say this proudly, soca music. Let's find out where it came from. The soca music that they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Now. If I'm going to be honest with you, it came from, you remember I told you I used to play string band music? Right. That kind of beat is what I, when I started to play with arrows, it's because of my years playing that string band, which is a more drop style music, I changed arrow music. Arrow never used to sing that style of music. It was never heard about, you know? If you look at um, We Dancing, mm -hmm. And those tunes that I did, it, 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 that was the vein in 1981. Remember, we dancing was 1981, and Hatatat is 1982. Right. I could I could tell you a story. Well, uh, we'll get to that. Um, no, no, we we'll go back further to when, when Edwardson did um, Give Me Hot Soca. Right. That was, me and Arrow had a big blow up over that, because I, I gave Arrow a tune to record. And when the tune, when Arrow came back, I said, Arrow, what is this? This don't make no sense. Edward was singing your show. <laughs> soca is what I gave you. Uh -huh. That's the rhythm I gave you. Not, not, so he, he took your rhythm and gave you his. You understand what I'm saying? Right, said, right. So Arrow was, at that time, was the blueprint for Soka. So I'm saying it's like the blueprint for Soka came from out of St. John's. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand. I understand. Because that is what I brought to the table. Mm -hmm. Remember, Arrow was singing before, Gina under the bed, and um, yeah, I, I, different style of music altogether. Yeah, monster, monster culture. Right. Monster English, rather. Right. And and, it, it? So, and, and, and beat up the drum slowly, and I love that song. Right. I think that's one of his best songs he ever had. I, I really love that song. But I'm saying it's a different style. Right, and, and then... He didn't really go in, in go into that direction and, and until you came in. But that is the direction and even the beat. Even the beat that, that they used was a complete different beat. Mm -hmm. I mean if you look at it and if you if you if you find the drummer that used to play for Arrow right now, mm -hmm. um, his name is Errol Wise, he would tell you Ed Watson didn't know what we were doing, Arrow didn't know what we were doing. It was just a communication with me and him. I tell him, this is what we want. And me and him discuss it, and, we, and, and he just do it. And he always tell people that. Okay. You know? He is, he is the one that played the beat, but it's me and him. We tell him, listen to me. Me don't want none of them feeling things. Me don't want them someday. Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? And he would just do it. And he loved to hear that guy is a very, very great drummer, you know? Uh-huh. And he loved, when I told him that, he just ran away with it and did his own thing. Nice. That is the beginning of a new era in, in soccer music. Soccer music. There was nobody else doing it before. Well, this, yes, which brings us to um, <clears throat> to the centerpiece, Hot Hot Hot. Because I've, I've heard the interviews with people when, when they talk about how Hot 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 was created, you know, and they mention names like uh, a hero, uh, the bass man from um, Burning Flames. But, I've, uh, you know, on those interviews, I, and nobody mentions reality. Well, and you know, let me tell you something. These are people who I am disappointed with. I'm very disappointed with Unku and, and, and Hero. Because, it's, it's, for me, it's like, why is it that it is so impossible to give a man what is rightfully his? It's like, what, is, what does it take away from you? I would never take anything away from, from Hero or Unku as a bass player, what mm -hmm. they do. You understand? Right. Now, when, when, I, when Arrow 
you know, and, he, and he's dead and gone now. Now, the song was not even called Hat at Hat. I had that idea of writing a song called Fundamental Jam for years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I came with an idea, I don't know who we got it from, whether it was Falcon or who, for a song. And, you know, the way that they wanted me to do the song, I refused, you know. And I, I, I said I wasn't going to do it. Because I said to Arrow, I understand where you're trying to go, but we are always a leader. We are not a follower. And he, they brought a song and wanted me to write a song like that. Um, the only part of that song that was existing, um, the, the ole, 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 that was in that song. Okay. Remember where that song came from. And I said, oh, look, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to start. Because once you start doing something, it could, it could, it could shape the way you, you think for the rest of your life. And right. So you didn't want to get into that at all? I'm not going to get into that. And, and, and Arrow was a little bit upset that I took that, that, that road. And, 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 you know, we wrote all the other songs and we were ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, the menu, party happening and all of those songs was finished. And one day he gets second. I said, don't need to do this song and you want to do it. And I said, Arrow, if I want to write a song, I take up my guitar like this, and this is exactly how hot came. Okay, I'm going to tell you. This is no lie. This is the, this is the fact. I say, I'm going to take up my guitar like this, and I'm going to put on a tape like this. And I, while I was telling him this, Hero was there, Gus White was there, there was other people there. Mm -hmm. And I put on the tape, and I started to strum my guitar, and I said, if I want to write a song like that, I would just say, my mind on fire, me soul on fire, feeling hot. Party people all around me, feeling hot, hot. What to do on a night like this? Music sweet. That's how I did it. I just was playing the song and singing it down, and they, and they were recording it. And that was how hot that came. You yeah, understand what I'm telling that's, um, that's not even remotely close to, and that is exactly to, what, what, I, to what I've heard. Uh, well, whatever you hear, and whatever they want to say, and some people tell me that heroes say, that I did have nothing. Now, after I did, after I recorded that, mm -hmm. I took the song and me and Hat Daily went and did some more work on the song and, and, and bring the song closer. The song was never, ever named Hat at Hat at that time. It was called Fundamental Jam. Hat Daily is from St. John's? From St. John's. Okay. And me and him used to work and, you know, because, you know, me and him started to, to work on the song and, and, and get the song closer. Now after, for certain reasons, that same year, I, I quit. You understand? And after I quit, it was treated like I didn't do the song. I didn't do anything. You know, the only part of the song that I know that I had nothing to do with was the bridge. The bridge? The, the, the chant. Oh, okay. Because they, 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 when they record, you know, whatever, they add that later. Mm -hmm. But to say I didn't do the song, it's, it's, it's just ridiculous. I don't understand why they would do that and why they would say it. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a believer in God, and anything that God gives you cannot be taken away. You know? So nobody, then, then nobody's ever... Um... Nobody has ever admitted except, well, you know, I've never sat down with hero face to face and, and discussed it. Uh-huh. I was told by very reliable sources that he wrote that I had nothing to do with it. I don't know if he did. No, but I told this story. I've, I've heard him story. He says, um, you know, he recalls home. Now he I'm sorry. I recall home from Amsterdam and something, something. Oh, I something that we had to have in a club on a call from Amsterdam, and that's how he came about. I've heard. Listen to me. I've heard so many stories about how that happened. <laughs> that, I'm just. It's just ridiculous to me. Even, you know, one of the things that, that irritates me about that song, even the bass line for the song. Mm -hmm. Which Ungo gets ready for? Even the bass line, which, 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 is, which is very, very, very important part of the song. If it wasn't for me, it wouldn't be there. Because I'm always looking to do new things. And when, when I did this song, I, I asked Ungo to put a bass line to the song. And Ungo started to do the bass line. He slapped it. And then... I remember one day when I came, Randy Greenery is my cousin. One day when I came, he would told me that I would bring Randy Greenery to put a bass line to the song. And I'm saying, well, why would he do that after 
I had already told Uncle to put the bass line and Uncle put the bass line and he came and heard the style. So a different direction we're going. Why would he go back to a different thing and mm -hmm. you know, like that? And I was, I was, you know, I was very upset about it. Right. You know, I was like, we trying to we trying to go in a different direction. I mean, I'm not to say I love Randy, he's my cousin, but I'm saying here is it we doing a you know going in a different direction and he's going behind my back and going in a different direction with it. I'm very upset. So after I left, I don't know how is it that they they um, they brought back Uncle to do the baseline. You know, I was not around anymore. Okay. I am the one who suggested that they use the slap bass on it from the beginning. And I was overruled by everybody. You understand what I'm saying? Right, right. Like, oh, no, that's not going to work. Even when Chris came into the, even, even when Chris came into the group, the, the, remember the white guy that played with yeah, Arrow? Yeah, remember, remember Chris. I went to Arrow and I said, Arrow, um, there's a guitarist that's playing with me and my brother, and he is exactly what you need. And Arrow said to me, um... The rock and roll guitar is too noisy. I said, no, you got to hear this man. This man is not noisy. This man is good. This man is great. You know? Mm -hmm. And I remember one night he come down in the club and hear me and my brother and, and he playing. And when he's done, he tell me, why bring that man? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Right. So I'm always on the lookout for, for new things, you know? And, you know, I'm, very, I'm a little disappointed that, you know, at, at some of the people and at some of their behavior, but it, it's, it's all good. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not upset with them as to say, you know, that they should give me my due. I'm not upset with them. You know why? Because I know better. I know that the heart of man is desperately wicked. And not, not to judge those people. I'm judging everybody. That's the way man, including me. Our heart, that's how we are. Right, okay. You know, so it's not, it's like if somebody does do something good, I more believe I should go to them and, and compliment them when they do something good rather than knock them when they do something bad, you know. So I, I just leave it alone. I'm not, I'm not really upset about anything. Well, anything at all in life, I'm not upset about it.